In this there video, we're going to make some potassium permanganate, KMnO4. It was first discovered by Johann Glauber in 1659, quite a while ago. He was a German-Dutch alchemist, and he found it by accident. It's inorganic and decomposes at 240 degrees Celsius, but it'll start to break down in boiling water. Most people know it because it's a strong oxidizer, but it's also an antiseptic. Typically, it's used uh, topically, but it has been used internally also, and more than 10 grams orally is no good. A lot is produced per year, around 35,000 tons. The dark color is caused by the permanganate anion, obviously not the potassium cation. Potassium permanganate reacts strongly with glycerol or glycerin and sulfuric acid. The materials we're going to use are manganese dioxide, 40 grams, potassium hydroxide, 55 grams, potassium nitrate, 30 grams, and later on bleach, which will be a 5.5% uh, solution, and hydrochloric acid at 31%. I'm going to go over a couple of reactions here because they are important as to how this whole procedure progresses. The first one is 2 manganese dioxide plus 4 potassium hydroxide plus the oxygen, which is coming from the potassium nitrate here, yields 2 potassium manganates and 2 waters. This little triangle here means heat was applied and that heat is typically between 350 and 500 degrees Celsius. So you got to get this mix really hot. Before any going any further, I want to go over the manganese oxidative states. So when we're using manganese dioxide, manganese ion is in the plus four state. In potassium manganate, it's in the plus six state. And in potassium permanganate, it's in the plus seven state. So as we go from the manganese dioxide, we continue to lose electrons, increasing the positive charge of the manganese ion. Coming back to this reaction up here again, the potassium hydroxide that we add provides the potassium ions for the potassium manganate, and it also provides the alkaline environment for the plus six state of the manganese ion to exist. And again, here's the potassium manganate in the plus six state. The potassium hydroxide makes that possible. But we need to remove one more electron, as I was mentioning, to get to the potassium permanganate in the plus seven state. So the potassium manganate needs to be oxidized. We're going to oxidize it by using chlorine gas. So the next reaction is two potassium manganate plus chlorine gas yields two potassium permanganate plus two potassium chloride. A couple of things here. Chlorine gas oxidizes better if the potassium manganate solution is warm versus cold or chilled. And later on, when the potassium permanganate solution is chilled, the potassium permanganate comes out of solution first compared to anything else that might be in the solution. And when I'm talking about chilled or cold, I'm talking about negative five to zero degrees Celsius. And the last reaction here is making the chlorine gas. So here we have sodium hypochlorite plus hydrochloric acid yields the chlorine gas plus salt plus water. In our methods, well, I ran out of room. I hope you can actually see what I did down here. Ah, just kidding. In our methods, for real, we need a steel can. We're going to put the manganese dioxide in there, the potassium hydroxide, and the potassium nitrate. Mix it about good. Then I'm going to blowtorch it for at least 10 to 12 minutes at a high heat so that this is red hot. At this point, the manganese dioxide is becoming potassium manganate. Once we let the can cool down, we're going to add water and use something. I put a screwdriver here, whatever, to break up the chunks at the bottom because it's going to be a pretty hard chunk. And then we're going to put the contents of the can into a flask and stir it for at least two hours, one to two hours, to make sure that everything is broken up really well. Our flask of potassium manganate and add the chlorine. I'm going to have an addition funnel with hydrochloric acid bleached down here. And I'm going to have a backwash saver right here just in case. I've done this now multiple times. I've been saved at least once, if not twice. So once the chlorine gas enters the potassium manganate, it will cause it to lose that electron and it will become potassium permanganate. After this has been stirring for a while to make sure all the chlorine gas is mixed in there well, I'm going to take it and suction filter it and we're going to save the filtrate. At this point, we're going to suction out any uh, manganese dioxide that might still be left in there unreacted. And then we're going to take the uh, filtrate there I'm going to transfer it into some sort of a beaker and put it in the freezer in order to chill it. And as I said earlier, the potassium permanganate will come out of solution first. When the potassium permanganate crystals form when it's in the freezer, I'm going to go ahead and suction it again, therefore saving the potassium permanganate here on the top, dump it out, air dry it, weigh it, and then we're done. I'll probably do a simple test or two just to make sure uh, we got what we think we got. Uh, but then we'll be finished. I needed two boards to get this done, so let's definitely get on to the experiment and make some potassium permanganate. 40 grams of manganese dioxide, pre-weighed. 55 grams of potassium hydroxide, pre-weighed. 30 grams of potassium nitrate, pre-weighed. This is a steel can I'm using. It's all burnt looking because I burned off the uh, rubber coating or plastic coating, I mean. And uh, so, yeah, that's what it looks like. So this is the manganese dioxide going in. Potassium hydroxide going in and potassium nitrate going in. I'm 
I'm going to add just a small amount of distilled water. You want to use as little as possible, just enough to get things that will dissolve, dissolved. You can already see the reaction starting. Next, we're going to heat it a lot. Side right now, and there's the mix right there with the water still, of course. It's cooled down a little bit in the five minutes it took to get out here, but there's my propane torch I'm going to use to heat it. I'm going to heat it until the water evaporates gently, and then I'm going to really heat it red hot for at least 10 to 12 minutes. I'm going to be wearing these gloves. I have this gas mask on right here, and my timer set to 12 minutes, so I'm going to get going on this right now. Okay, it's done. Uh, I'm just letting it cool now until we go to the next step. It's still cooling down, but I just want to show you the inside right there. That's production of a lot of manganate in there. So what I was worried about was overheating. This started to bend right there, and I did not want to lose the can. Fortunately, nothing happened. Something spurted out, you can see, around here, but nothing got on me, thankfully. And I ended up doing it for the full 12 minutes right there. This has been cooling for around five hours, much longer than it really needed to be, but it is definitely cool. So I'm going to now add the distilled water. Again, you don't want to add too much because you just have to get rid of it later, but just enough to break this up. I have a screwdriver here to assist me in doing that. That stuff is really hard, man. All right. What I think I'm going to do is put more water in here and just let this sit and let it soak in. So I don't know, that's probably 20 or 30 milliliters of water. You can see it right there, what it looks like. All right, I'm going to let it sit for a bit. I will be back. This was sitting for only about 10 or 15 minutes, and I just started to drill the, uh, kind of like this, into it, and it started to break apart. I've managed to break all of the chunks off the edge there, and uh, a lot of this has turned into like a slurry. There are a couple big chunks, although they're mobile in here. I need to break down still, so I'm going to take care of that. Uh, this has to be poured into a flask next, so I'll have to add enough water for it at least to be able to uh, get out of here. All of the big chunks in here were, have been pretty much smashed, so it's all this mushy kind of slurry stuff right now. I don't need a screwdriver anymore. And the next step is to get it in here. So I'm going to have to add some water to it for sure. Okay, pretty good. Not going to get much more out of there. I cleaned everything up, and there's about 225, 230 milliliters here of the manganate and water. So I'm going to stir this with a magnetic stirrer for a good hour to two at least to make sure everything is broken down nicely in there before we go on to the next step. I've got the solution here on my magnetic stirrer, and I'm going to turn it on and leave it for an hour to an hour and a half. A long time because I'm not 100% sure I got all the small pieces broken down. Um, I know I got the big ones, but not for sure about the smallest ones. This is just to make sure that everything gets broken down into the smallest particles. So I'll be back. I'm not going to time lapse this because it will be boring. It's been mixing for an hour and a half, which is plenty, plenty long, I'm sure. So I'm going to turn down the magnetic stir here. Here's the next step. This is the addition funnel that will add uh, hydrochloric acid down here to sodium hypochlorite, aka bleach. The chlorine gas will then follow up here. It'll hit this filter, which is just a drying filter to keep moisture from going any further. And then it'll come down here. This is a flask to catch any backflow that might occur. And finally, the chlorine gas will come all the way down here and end up in this flask with the potassium manganate solution. Uh, it looks like that because when I was finished uh, mixing it, I swirled it around by hand and got the stuff all the way up the flask, so it kind of looks dirty, but it's the same solution. So this is the next step. Uh, having this backflow catcher might be an overkill, but if you've ever had an accidental backflow, it ruins the experiment. So I started doing this regardless of the situation, and at least twice, it's really come in handy. Over here, I'm going to be putting the tube for the chlorine gas into the potassium manganate solution just to get the chlorine uh, intimately in touch with the physical manganate. Also, because the chlorine is oxidizes the manganate better in slightly warmer temperatures, I'm going to turn the heat up very, very low, maybe 30 degrees Celsius, but just to make sure the chlorine gets through there faster and more complete. Adding the hydrochloric acid, 31% to the addition funnel, and putting on a greased stopper, which I know you can't see, but yeah, trust me. And adding the 500 milliliters of 5.5% bleach or sodium hypochlorite to the one liter round bottom flask. And again, I've said it already, but dripping the hydrochloric acid into here 
will produce the chlorine gas we need that oxidizes the potassium manganate. Okay, everything's sealed up good. I'm going to start opening this valve very carefully just to get a drop every few seconds. All right, there we go, just a few drops at a time. Uh, it seems to be wanting to run down the sides there. I do have my fume hood running on this end. You can see bubbles starting to come out. I'm going to turn on the stir now. You can see the chlorine gas swirl around in there. Knowing how dangerous this stuff is, it, it is a little bit scary. Of course, it's contained. Just be careful if you ever work with this and always use a fume hood. It's been 40 minutes. I plan on running this for an hour. Just nice to see that the chlorine gas is still being produced. It's been 45 minutes and you can clearly see the change from a greenish color on the bottom there to a dark purple, almost black color, which is what we would expect when chlorine oxidizes the potassium manganate and produces our potassium permanganate. I just had to show you this backflow catcher is full of chlorine gas, obviously. Look how green it is. One hour is up, so I'm going to discontinue the chlorine gas by turning this off right here, of course. We used maybe two-thirds of the hydrochloric acid that was in there. On this end, I'm going to let it run for at least another hour so all the gas that was produced gets a chance to get into here. As this chlorine gas slows down, I noticed at the very bottom here there's a layer, which is, of course, salt and water, the other two products that are produced when you mix hydrochloric acid and bleach. And it's pretty dense to sit on the bottom like that, but yeah, that was pretty cool. Okay, I've already turned off the heat. I'll turn down the magnetic stir here and take out the last bit of tubing here. Everything else has been safely dismantled. And you can clearly see a very nice purple colored solution in there. I'm all set up here to do the vacuum filtration of the solution. And we're doing this to remove any unreacted manganese dioxide. We do have a very fine filter paper in there. Probably not necessary, but I'm always trying to save the fritted glass as much as I can. See that nice purple color. We're saving the filtrate. This is interesting. Look at how much solid is in here. I think what happened was last night uh, I ran chlorine gas through it, of course, and I heated the solution that was in here at the time. And um, then overnight it dropped to 60 degrees in here. And I think what happened was because I'm using so little water, potassium permanganate crystallized out. There might be some other impurities, but I think that's what most of this is right here. So I'm gonna take out the filter paper and then run some water over what you see in there. Um, I'm gonna do this off camera because it's gonna be really messy, but it's about as clean as I think I wanna get it. It's just uh, too much work to go any further. What I did was I took all that solid, I put it into this beaker, added some water to it, and then swirled it around good. And a lot of it did loosen up, so we'll see what happens here. It's just the fritted glass, and um, we'll see how much more of it can come through. All right, I'll be back when I'm done. You can clearly see there's far less solid that collected this time without the filter paper and by running just a little more water through it. So we were, inter we're interested in the filtrate at the bottom. I'm going to stop this here, and then we'll take the filtrate and we'll put it in the freezer. I'm simply going to transfer the filtrate to this 500 milliliter beaker before I put it in the freezer. One quick comment before I put this in a freezer, just a reminder, the potassium permanganate will come out of solution first uh, as the temperature drops before anything else. All right, it's going in right here next to the frozen strawberries and the bacon. Yum. All right, we're looking for zero degrees Celsius at 21.3 degrees Celsius. Now, of course, that's going to drop. By the way, stainless steel does not react with potassium permanganate, so there's no problem putting that thermometer in there. All right. After stirring, it's 5.4 degrees Celsius. So we're getting there. Well, we're at negative 1.1 or 1 Celsius, not a big deal at all. So I'm going to grab this and let's go filter it. Let's filter our potassium permanganate solution here. Just came out of the freezer. Okay, I'll be back when it's done um, pulling all the liquid through. Look at all those nice potassium permanganate crystals. I'm going to lay this out and dry it. 
there's a chance there's some potassium permanganate still in here. I may refreeze this and see what happens, uh, but I'm not going to include that in the video for now because this is mainly what I wanted to get. All right, when it's dry, we'll weigh it. A couple of comments here to clean my fritted glass earlier uh, when I did this and, and filtered it to get the manganese dioxide out of here. It took uh, a lot of trial and error to get it out, but I want to tell you what I did. I mixed 20% uh, of the solution was 30% hydrogen peroxide and 80% of the solution was 70% or concentrated nitric acid. And I put about 50 milliliters in here and within 10 minutes it was white. I couldn't believe how well it worked. I just want to make a quick comment on that. When we just filtered the solution out of the freezer, this is what I used, this round bottom flask to collect the filtrate. And I just wanted to show you how green it is. Just once again to show that the manganate goes through the filter while the potassium permanganate, permanganate comes out of the solution first. I've got the scale teared to zero and that of course includes the funnel there. So let's go ahead and weigh this. Just as a side note, damp or wet potassium permanganate likes to eat through cellulose. Something I learned in doing this. I'm specifically talking about the filter paper. Wow, no way. 23 grams on the money. Wow. Well, I was honestly hoping for something in the 28 to 30 range. I still think there is some potassium permanganate in the solution uh, that I talked about before the filtrate. So if it weighed out, it might be close to that. However, um, this is what we got right now. I am going to run a couple of very basic tests on this um, next. And just as a quick comment, Nerd Rage, oh, 23.04. Nice. Nerd Rage uh, has a a video on making potassium permanganate near the end. He shows titration of potassium permanganate with hydrogen peroxide. That's really interesting. So you might want to go give him a shout out. But next, I'm going to do those simple tests. The first one is the most simple, and that is just to drop some of our homemade potassium permanganate here in some water and watch the color because, of course, if it is potassium permanganate, you should only see purple. I'm trying to get a small amount of a can here because it doesn't take much. Okay, here we go. Can't really see that, but... There you go. Nice and purple. So that's always a vote of confidence right there. Just the top of a can. Here goes our potassium permanganate. It's not ground fine, so I'm actually not sure how quickly this will start up, but let's see what happens. Decided to move the camera back a bit. Make a little divot like so. And let's add some glycerin here. Gosh, that did not take long. There it goes. Test two, done.